I'm a tobacco control researcher and I'm also interested in environmental health and risk reduction, preventing illness by making healthy choices the easy choices and making environments healthy so people don't even have to think about being healthy. About 15 years ago, I was lucky in that I was invited into a, a room of movers and shakers who were talking about how they could influence tobacco use in our city, and so I had nothing to lose, so I just said, how about if we work together to try to make Lexington smoke-free? And frankly, I thought they'd laugh me out of the room, and that's not what happened. We had some pretty forward-thinking people around the table, and they said, well, you know, if you put together a plan, you know, maybe we'll consider it. So I did, uh, with some colleagues at the health department, put together a plan and uh, one thing kind of led to another and Lexington did go smoke free and we had a great opportunity to conduct some science around it to evaluate just what kind of effects it had. I was able to pull together a really uh, interdisciplinary team of scientists both at the Gatton School and colleagues around the country to conduct about seven or eight different studies where we asked the question, were people in Lexington healthier as a result of the smoke-free law? And that's what we found. We saw a dramatic decline in adult smoking in, in Lexington compared to 30 other counties that looked like us but who didn't have smoke-free laws. We saw about a 32% decline in, in adult smoking and that translated into 16,500 fewer smokers and it meant that we were saving about $21 million a year in healthcare costs, just Lexington alone. So that was pretty dramatic. So when I looked at the statistics, I realized that 85% of the lung cancers are in people who are first-hand smokers, and I don't think that's any surprise to anyone. But the others who get lung cancer, the 15% of those who get lung cancer, are those who are exposed to secondhand smoke, but also radon. And I learned that there's this combined effect, so that if you're exposed to both tobacco smoke and radon, you're about 10 times more likely to get lung cancer. Tobacco smoke isn't the only answer, it's the bulk of the answer, uh, but it's also a combination uh, of this colorless, odorless, tasteless gas that just gets into buildings of no fault of anybody's. It's very testable. You know, really all you have to do is test your home or the building where you work, and certainly fixable. We have a lot of questions to ask and a lot of answers to get in order to prevent lung cancer. We have generations of Kentuckians who have lost their lives, who've known grandmas and mothers and fathers and uncles and aunts who've died prematurely from tobacco use, whether it be cancer, heart disease, emphysema. It's the single most preventable cause of death in the world. I've really committed my whole professional career trying to reduce the harm, the economic burden, and the, the health and quality of life burden from tobacco. We do have a land grant mission. We do care about the people who live in every nook and cranny in our state. We do a lot of work out in rural Kentucky. We many times will go give testimony at a city council or a fiscal court meeting. And I find those are the, mo the most rewarding times um, when you know I can really go into a community and, and help them make a difference in their own community and leave a legacy. I think UK has been a great place to kind of give me the laboratory to do the work that I do so that we can make a difference for the, in the lives of the people who live here.